it's time to make a storage room. Hello everyone, welcome back to Vanilla. In the last episode we did a little bit of work on this cave out here, decorating it up a little bit, still not completely finalized, but I do like the palette that I'm going for and the, uh, the sort of style. And in the process of digging that out, I decided that I wanted to do my storage room in here. So I dug this out as well, and today we're going to go about setting up the mechanics for it all, I think. Not necessarily decorating it just yet, but I want to get a bunch of chests put in, I want to get some redstone sorted, and maybe start going through that process, getting it all ready to start putting items in. Now, I've got myself some shulker boxes, some empty shulker boxes, and there's a few things that I want to grab before we, uh, we start tackling it. Buddy, you just sit over there and wait, alright? Look after the place. Keep it company. <laughs> so, I do have a bunch of logs that are uh, pretty easy to farm. I'm not going to bother doing it with uh, acacia or anything like that. These ones can just be sacrificed because I don't feel like I'm going to be using too much of the birch logs. So that's going to get us plenty of chests. In fact, yeah. Four and a half stacks should be good for now. Let's uh, put those away in there. Next thing I want to do is get myself some more ice. Luckily, we do have a mountain nearby that's got a ton of it. So if we just pop over to our spawn camp, we can head over this direction. Uh, yeah, over there. And because this is packed ice, it's actually uh, way more convenient for me to, to use than anything else. So I'm actually going to probably come over to a spot like this. Where it doesn't matter so much if I delete it. Oh, there's goats. And I'm going to just grab myself a bunch of this. Alright. With a little bit of time spent there and converting it down, I managed to get myself just under two stacks. But uh, totaled up, we have over two stacks of blue ice, which should be more than enough. In fact, I'm going to keep those on me. And we're just going to put two of those away. Keep a few spare. I also managed to find an emerald ore, which is kind of fun because it was one that I'd forgotten about. So we might uh, might be on the search for a deep slate emerald ore and a stone variety of diamond ore. Just to complete it up, that'd be nice. So now that I've got some chests and I've got some blue ice, I need a lot of hoppers and a lot of redstone. So I probably actually need to make more chests because there's going to be a requirement for a lot of hoppers. That's fine. We've got plenty of birch. We can make some more. And then I need to go mining. <laughs> yeah, this is going to require a lot of materials. Perfect. That should do. And it's probably about time that I went over and checked the iron farm, actually. Since it's probably been running while I was doing that whole cave. Uh, yes... Okay, cool. Couple of hours worth, not too shabby. I'm just going to grab all of that, turn it into blocks, and I think, yeah, I've started storing them there too. All right, that's a decent amount of iron there, and I'm gonna grab, I think two blocks, or two stacks of blocks should be enough to make up the hoppers that I need. If not, I've got an entire shulker of blocks back home. Now, in theory, we're going to need more hoppers than we need chests. But the chests also want to be double. So, that would be 128 double chests. 196? 92. 192. Hmm. Are we going to need even more chests? It's definitely possible. For now, though, I'm going to see how many hoppers I can make with all of this. Eh, a little bit. I'll just grab a little bit more from here. All right, what's that? Seven stacks of hoppers. Hopefully that's enough. I'm going to keep those in there. Just a couple. I've only got 128 chests left. Luckily, we did a lot of wood farming earlier on in the season. So, Birch, thank you for your sacrifice. And better. Wonderful. Not quite a matching amount, but uh, I feel like we're going to need more hoppers anyway. So now it is just a matter of going and collecting myself a bunch of redstone. I have a little bit here, which is decent, but I think I'm going to want just a little bit more just to be safe. Well, let's see what we get with fortune. Where is my fortune pick? Right there. We might also add mending to that just so that it heals itself. 
Now we're going to keep the stone variety of the redstone ore, even though I know I can get a decent amount. I'm more likely to get the redstone in the deep slate. So. Not bad, but yes, definitely going to need more. So I might do a quick little mining session, get myself the redstone that I need. We might duck in... Oh no, I've probably got enough with all of that to get myself enough nether quartz. Yeah, I think that should be more than enough. So with that quartz, I just want a little bit more redstone and then we should be good. So give me a minute. Now I think we can start working out how we want to build this thing. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh. Oh, oh. <laughs> that startled me so bad. Look what I found. Oh, I'm so glad that didn't blow up on that. I found some. Oh, I did it. We got some plain diamond ore. Any more? Doesn't look like it. I've just been wandering around all sorts of caves, as you can see, grabbing everything that I see as I go, but haven't actually found that much redstone. So I'm still searching, but look at that. We found some of the diamond ore. The only ore that I'm missing now is uh, deep slate emerald. Nice. But I wanted to bring you guys back in. To, uh, to show you that. I'm going to keep going for a little while longer. Plenty of caves down here. Plenty to explore. And I should, without too much trouble, find myself all the redstone that I need. And hopefully no more surprise creepers. Redstone. Okay, so. I have collected all that I can. And also used a bunch of redstone. To make up all of these repeaters and these comparators. I only have 96 of each right now, but uh, we're going to see how we go. 96 would end up being 48 on either side, which would basically take up the entire side on both sides, because this is about 55. That's if we only do one layer of sorting on each one, which we probably will. I've also grabbed myself a little bit of glowstone in case I need to light up some areas, and we're going to use polished diorite as just my building material for the redstone. Tucking it away so that it is uh, obvious what I'm using for the redstone. So if I'm ever digging around in here later on and I see myself some polished diorite, I know what it's for. Now, something that I tend to do when I'm uh, setting these up for the first time in a world, especially when it comes to these series, is I like to show off a refresher on how to make the sorting system. And this system was designed by Impulse SV. Most of you, I'm sure, will know Impulse. Fantastic creator, fantastic hermit, uh, incredibly smart and incredibly talented at building as well. And this has just worked forever. So this is how you make it. I'm going to do it in a bit of an odd way, but uh, it will still work just fine. Basically, we want to make this shape here. Three across the top and then one down onto the fourth. So this whole thing is four blocks long. We take three pieces of redstone out of this comparator down onto that block. And when that comparator is powered up to a certain level, that level being three redstone power worth, it will activate that block with redstone. And this repeater will continue that through turning off this redstone torch, allowing items through a hopper. Now, we place a hopper facing into that. I don't know whether it necessarily always has to be facing into that, but I just find that that works best. And then from there, directly in line with this top layer here is where you can put your first chest. The reason being this block will be powered by this, meaning that... Items, well, actually items will go through until it hits 45. Yes. So once the number in this hopper hits 45, it's going to be less than three power. Now, if I open this up, uh, I should be able to see that it says zero power. I'll zoom in on that. And then we have one. But if I was to put some more items in, we can see that that is at power two. That will go down to power one when it gets lower on items like it did just then, and eventually it will lose enough power that this turns back on and locks this hopper like that. Now, how we can use this to our advantage is by putting in an item that we aren't going to sort 
into these four slots just here. From there, when we put an item in this first layer, only that item can be sorted through this inventory and it will stop at 41. One will go into this item hopper, but everything else will go through. And if you have items passing over the top of this, only the polished diorite would be picked up. Obviously sticks would too, but you can rename things to make them unique and use them as a filter option in there. So that's essentially it. Not only is this extremely, extremely useful, but it's also tileable. So I can do the exact same thing. If I just grab that, I can do the exact same thing side by side as long as I want. Now we're going to do this in sections and we're going to have it so that it uh, has water flowing over all of the hoppers in this line. Continuing on with a little bit of this blue ice that we collected and essentially we'll have a spot where we can put our items in and they will flow infinitely around the loop until they are picked up by a hopper. Should work pretty well. Impulse came up with this design many years ago now and it's pretty much the standard at this point. There are more complex ways to sort items, but for me, this is something that I find extremely easy and extremely reliable and I don't need to go to super, super levels for sorting. I just want something that will sort them into basic sorted chests along each wall. So with that, I think I'm going to get to work laying out all of my chests, sorting out and working out exactly how I'm going to have this room set up. We might get some preliminary areas organized, some walkway spaces going through, and then... uh. We can work on bringing in some items and sorting out where we want to put them all. So with that, we're going to jump into a quick time lapse. I'm going to get that all built up. It's going to take me a while just to sort through it and make sure everything's prepared. And then we can move forward from there. Hope you enjoy and I'll see you on the other side. Well, that took a lot longer than I intended it to. I really got stuck with this whole build. I got stuck trying to work out how I wanted to set it all up. And so it actually took me a couple of days of taking breaks and coming back to it at different times just to get my head around what I actually wanted to do. Now, these aren't permanent, but I kind of just want to put some down anyway. So what we have here is a full loop from this spot back to this spot where items will transport around this system, depositing anything that is sortable. Now, in these four corners, I have some storage silos and these silos are going to be used for stone, dirt, maybe something like deep slate, maybe even cobbled deep slate and grass or moss. I'm not quite sure just yet. Something we want to store a lot of because each one of these is nine double chests plus the hoppers. I think I worked out it's something around 34 or 35,000 blocks stored. So those will be good for storing up bulk items and once we combine all of this and hide it into the design of our room what you will see is basically this chest here and these will light up depending on how much is in the storage silo. So once it gets into this chest, this will light up. Once it's into this chest, the next one will light up and so on and so forth all the way up to the top. Now I'm going to go into free cam here and show you how this works. It comes over here first and foremost 
and up to our first sorter that is tucked into the roof. Now this is just an individual sorter by itself that will sort straight down into the uh, storage silo and I just raised it up a little bit so that it's actually not poking out the bottom of this, this area here. We will change that up to be something a little bit thinner when we get to working on the, uh, the decoration part of it, but for now I've just put it in so that everything is functional. So it comes across there, and then once it has deposited whatever will be stored in that area, it drops back down into here. We may make a little bit of a funnel or something, but it will drop back down and start making its way across the top of all of these. As it makes its way across there, because I want to have access through this, I've actually just made it drop down, come across, and then bubble elevator back up, continue along, and then the same thing happens. It goes up into this little area, sorts, and continues around the back of the whole, uh, the whole system over top of this second one, and then back down again to continue this line, continue under, through the last storage silo, and anything that's left over will end up here. So what we will end up doing when we decorate is creating something that is an automatic unloader. Something that I can either put items in manually or just put down a shulker box with stuff on top of it. And then that will uh, just begin to spit the items out and slowly drain itself, sending it through. So what I want to do now is test whether this truly does go all the way around. So we see that go up. We should see it pop back down here in a second. There we go. I missed it falling. And uh, that should shoot up. Whoa, definitely shut up. We will put a block over top of that. And now wait a little bit for it to do its whole run around there. There we go, comes across. We should see it shoot up here in a second. Yeah, <laughs> and off it goes up through there. I think I missed it happen and then, nice. So the loop works, <laughs> That's, that is a positive. And the reason that nothing gets actually picked up is because I have gone through and in every single one of these, I have sorter sticks. Something that I have renamed all the same to be sorter. And what I can do is go through to each individual one. And when I decide what I want to be stored in there, I come over, I take out the first one and say, I want to store diorite there. We put that into the first slot and it is set, but I'm not going to do that just yet. So this is the bones, the, uh, the brains of the system. We're going to be able to walk in here. I'm going to have the block displayed one way or another so that we know what is where. And I'm probably going to build something in the center here where I can place down a shulker box or have one pop up and, uh, we can go back and forth between all of our bits and pieces and fill up a shulker box with stuff. Now this is for the bulk sort of supplies, storing things in here, and each one has a double chest worth, but I've also placed these barrels above them for anything that is a uh, an extra. So for example, if we did have our diorite in this spot here, like we sort of showed off before, like, this, for example, say that was marking that there was diorite there. This would hold the standard diorite, but up in the top, we would have stuff like the polished and stairs and half slabs and all of that. So that way I can uh, keep things sort of together, organized that way. But what I think I want to do is create two little rooms off the side. We'll hide all of this. And this is kind of how I've decided I'm going to hide the water columns. We'll do the same thing up over there and, and over there. But I want to have two little rooms on either side here that are going to be barrel rooms. And they're going to be for less often used things. Stuff that I want to uh, store away, for example. Oh, nailed it. <laughs> For example, if it was stuff like uh, chorus flowers or different forms of lighting, like a lighting box, some food and stuff. I'm not going to make an entire double chest or two double chests worth to store carrots or anything like that. I'll just put them away. Things like the amethyst clusters or skulk sensors, things like that can be sorted into places like that. The flint. The flint may go above the gravel, actually, in the uh, the little area. But I hope you get the idea. Even some redstone areas, we may have, like, one wall of that little room could be dedicated to redstone. So, for example, I will have three different walls. You walk in, you'll have one side, 
the facing side and then the other side like that. And I think once this is all decorated, it's going to look really cool. I want to go for a uh, an earthy feel, deep colors, spruce and all of that, much like what I have outside. The combination of spruce and deep slate and bone block, as well as my mangrove. And see whether I can have like nice beams going across the top, making it feel like a proper hall. And then we do a nice design through the floor. I may even add another layer of barrels down here underneath everything and lower the floor one step so that we have a little bit extra just in case. So what I might start doing is digging this out. See if I can make up a little area. <laughs> All of this is trying to squeeze in and you can even see like that is actually the underside of this coming through. But because we're going to add stuff decoration wise, I'll probably be able to hide that when it comes to it. So I'm not too worried. I've managed to squeeze this in fairly nicely. While, in my opinion, still keeping it fairly aesthetic. Obviously, I could make a super dense, uh, super sorting system. Say that five times fast. Super sorting system. That's a lot of alliteration. And uh, follow a tutorial online. But many of you who have been here for a long time know I like to work these things out myself. None of this was done via tutorial. I didn't watch a single YouTube video or anything other than in the past, of course. This has just been done from memory. This is remembering how to do that and using the knowledge that I have to make it all. And I, this isn't even the most efficient way. You can make storage silos where they have all of the lights up in a single line. I don't know how to do that, or I don't remember anyway. But this works. The way that I've done it here works, and it's a bit unique. It's going to have uh, staggering. What I may even do is uh, on either side of these, next to each light, I might put a sign that indicates the amount that is inside the storage silo. So this will light up when this chest has just started to get items in it, and it'll be a range. So I can say, for example, 3,500 to 7,000 or whatever it ends up being in this range here. And then the range there, the range there, the range there, all the way to the top. I like that. That's a cool idea. So let me dig out either side of here and we'll see whether we can set up some barrels and get the functionality of this whole sorting system up and running. Okay, digging out done. I actually had to reset up this uh, beacon because it was taking a little bit of time. But now we have these rooms on either side, which are going to be our little storage room extras. Like storage 2.0. <laughs> so the main bulk stuff is out in the main hall. And then these ones are for the extra bits and pieces. So what I'm going to do here is hmm, five, six, seven, and then maybe one, two, three, four, five on the back. No, nah, maybe I'll go five on each side just because I want to leave room for decorating as well like that. Let's think about this. If I have 15 on each side, that's 45 barrels worth of storage in each one. That would be 90 barrels worth. So 90 single chests worth. That's not too bad. I think we might go a little bit more though. So that instead is 20, 20 and 20. That'll make us 60. And then we have uh, 120 barrels total. Very nice. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And boop, 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 boop. I made way too many. <laughs> That's all right. We've got some spare barrels in case we need to make extra rooms. So this is going to be really nice for the extras, all of the bits and pieces. I should be able to decorate this up to match whatever I come up with in here. And uh, yeah, I really like that. I like that a lot, actually. It may not look super impressive right now, but I think when I expand over top of this area with like a walkway up top and get some nice beams going and all sorts of bits and pieces, it's going to be pretty impressive looking. There's going to be a lot more light. It's going to look a lot more interesting than just all of this plain business here. And then down the sides, we will have like a nice walkway 
and this stuff. Now I need to decide in this area whether I want to use something like item frames, which could cause a little bit of lag, but since this is a solo world and I've got a fairly decent computer, it might not be too bad. And then these areas up here, we can organize with the uh, blocks themselves as a display piece. So I think that'll be okay. I think for this area over here, I'm just going to do something small inside this wall. A little bit of redstone designed to just tick really fast with a uh, like two repeaters touching into each other. I don't even know if I have any repeaters to do that. But basically the same as what we did over here for our little farm. So when we click that, go super fast. And we can have that spewing out items that are uh, being fed in. But it is going to be limited by the speed of a single hopper. Now we may be able to uh, speed that up ever so slightly by adding more hopper points going in. I'll see how I go. All in all, that should work pretty well. And then after that's all done, uh, the fun part kind of begins. The expanding out from here into different areas and connecting it all up to the rest of the base outside. Oh, hello, buddy. <laughs> so I think I am going to expand the, uh, the walkways up here out over top of this a little bit so that it, uh, it looks nice. So we're gonna be able to walk up over here and see our way down. Oh, I'm just imagining it in my mind's eye. I think it's gonna look really cool. But I think, I think everything's working. I think everything is set up and ready to go. All of these have their sorters in them so I can go through and uh, place down the items that we want. I just grab some glass here. I could just put a little piece of glass over top of that and another one over here. Ooh, yeah, there we go. That should stop the items from popping up. I just want to follow an item one last time. So let's put through a block of redstone that's easy to see. And I'm actually going to pop over into the free camp when I do this. So huh, let's see. That goes up there, across, down this way. It should pop up here in a second. There we go. Hopefully it doesn't go out of render range. Up into there. Across the whole thing. Not getting sorted into any of these because none of the filters accept it. Should pop up here in a second. And across. Like so. One last time up. And then we get it back to our original position. So we will have like a overflow chest here and what that will allow us to do is collect anything that is not sortable in this system and uh, so for example say i had a few things in a shulker box that would actually be sorted into these areas we could uh, have it sorted into there pick it up again and go in and manually sort that i do believe that the way i've set this up even though it shoots up high it should still sort into here but if it doesn't we may be able to make some adjustments just to make sure something like if i grab this i wonder if i can water log that and that would make it hit the bottom of that and move across let's uh let's try this out one last little adjustment just to make sure that everything works fine so let's do the same thing we'll throw that up in there and i will just come across here and we'll check it so it comes through there. Will this flow out? It does. And it looked like it squeezed past there a little bit, but maybe low enough that it would get picked up. Here it comes. Yeah. Okay. All right. One last test. If we do this and we set up a filter so that the redstone block goes into there, let's see whether it picks up. That is basically the only thing that I'm unsure about. Everything else should be perfect. And there we go. In fact, I'll actually stand down here and I should be able to see it do its thing. Let's wait at this chest and see whether or not we see ourselves a redstone pop in. I don't think it worked. I don't think it worked. Oh, <laughs> wait, it would have worked. It just didn't have enough to continue through. Right. Nice. So that side works. And now will the other do that? Oh, swap. Yeah. I swap. First try. And there we go. Nice. 
I am happy. I am happy with how this has come together. It really did cause me a fair bit of a mental strain. And I know that sounds weird, but sometimes... Sometimes you just don't know what you want to do in Minecraft. Sometimes it just doesn't quite fit. <laughs> Does that make sense? It doesn't quite work. And it takes time to uh, step back and, and look at things and go, okay, start from scratch, work through it again in your head and decide what you want to do. And these, uh, these silos really made me question it. I was trying to work out whether I wanted to do another section here, whether this would be enough. But we have seven in each of these. That means 14 on either side. So, wait, no, 14, 14, 14, 14, 56. That's a little bit over our double chest of blocks that will be sorted. In fact, let's quickly sleep. So, this will definitely be sorted. That's all my stone types and all of my, uh, my wood types. These I might put into one of those rooms at the end. In fact, that's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So that will fit in there for sure. And then things like these, uh, these items will also get their own area. So it could just give us a few extra slots. And basically this is what we're trying to achieve sorting for. Yeah, very nice. Now I will decide whether or not I want to do one last thing at the end or how I'm going to organize that purely for the valuables. But that can be in the next episode because although it may not seem like much, this was a huge amount of effort for me. Not only in making the decisions, but also just uh, life in general, making it hard for me to concentrate. And I feel like I finally achieved what I needed to do. So I'm going to call it there and call it a win. I hope you all enjoyed this episode, and I hope you find this interesting. I'm, uh, I'm really excited to set this up in the next episode and decorate the whole thing. We're going to do a proper decoration, a proper build, and fill everything in and make it look nice and pretty. And it's going to be one of the biggest builds combined with this that we have in this world so far. Yeah. I'm just imagining standing here and looking at this wooden, nice, warm-feeling storage hall. So... I would like to say thank you very much for watching and thank you to my Patreon supporters for your continued support, including some new Patreons. I appreciate you guys so much, genuinely. You don't have to do that, but the fact that you're willing to support me in this journey and continuing to make these uh, videos and content for everyone, it really does mean a lot. And for everyone who's watching, if you enjoyed, do me a favor and leave a like. It does mean a lot. And it helps the videos get out to more people and it shows YouTube that you like what you're watching. So with that, until the next episode, I hope you all take care of yourselves, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye, everyone. Uh, woof! <laughs>